Hi, I am Dory Azar, and in the video segment today, I'm going to show you how we can quickly create authentication with the Calligraphy Quill framework. So let's go ahead and get to our uh, Calligraphy installation, so the one that we installed. If you have not been following uh, the videos in the, in the Calligraphy documentation, I strongly encourage you to go back to uh, the installation video to uh, be able to catch up with what I am uh, doing today. Now, when I go and visit localhost My Calligraphy, by default, we've seen this view before. It gives us access to, uh, you know, multiple different resources that could be useful um, for you, including these uh, the, the videos that I am the tutorial videos that I'm uh, that I'm doing. But also, it gives us a quick access to the documentation that is on GitHub. So, if you don't wanna, or if you don't remember how to access the documentation on GitHub, a very good way to do it is directly from your uh, from 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 the from the home page of um, of a fresh installation. So I'm going to go to the docs and, um, and the cookbook of the calligraphy quill and we land exactly where the documentation is uh, on, on, on GitHub. So let me uh, go to the section where we're going to be, uh, that we're going to be looking at today, which is particularly about authentication. Okay, uh, it's section 10 of the documentation, or at least uh, as of this video, it's in section 10. Um, we're going to go in there and we're going to follow the steps that would allow us to uh, create or to, uh, to be able to authenticate um, um, uh, simply uh, using, using calligraphy. So what we're going to try and achieve in this whole thing is this ability to create a username and password and to protect certain functionalities uh, from, uh, from, uh, from some of the controllers that we're, that we're creating, okay? And calligraphy has a very, very quick way of giving you all the UI, not only the UI, but also um, the, 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 the models that you need in order for you to create this authentication in the most, um, in the most efficient way. So how does it work? Um, literally, it is just a matter of making sure that we've got, uh, first of all, that we have um, a table that is already in our database to support um, our, uh, our users. Um, so I'm going to go and open the code in order to show you, uh, in order to show you all of this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. This is uh, our code right now. This is the my calligraphy code that we have. We're going to go to the uh, sorry to the application section, and in the application section we have something called models, which is where we put all the models, and within that uh, we have an authorization folder or an auth folder. When we go to the auth folder, we see two files in there. There is a file called user.php, which happens to be the model um, that uh, calligraphy comes with out of the box. And then there is an SQL uh, file that, you know, can help you accelerate the creation of the user table from, um, uh, from either a PHP my admin or from the command line interface, whichever way uh, you want. Now, calligraphy out of the box come with a particular way of creating that user table, which uh, I'm going to try and uh, um, and show some of the features of it in in, in this video. But uh, you know, typically it has an ID, it has a username, a passcode, which is you know the equivalent of a password, and it has something called permissions, which uh, I will talk about later uh, later on in order to show you what this permissions allows you allows you to do. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and uh, copy this create table code uh, that we have in here, and I'm going to go do it in PHP my admin just to make uh, to make things a little uh, uh, a, li a little easier. And there's a way from the PHP my admin when I am in the my calligraphy um, my calligraphy. Uh, a database, um, there's a way to immediately uh, execute some uh, some SQL in there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and do and do that. So I'm going to copy the code. I'm going to hit the go, and ideally it's going to create a table in the my calligraphy database for me called users. All right. So um, by the way, we did not spend time, or we will not spend time in this uh, session. Um, to to show you how to connect to the MySQL database. If you really, really want to know how to do it, I strongly encourage you to uh, see the REST API um, video tutorial where we go uh, deeper uh, into, into how this whole thing is uh, done and how Calligraphy could connect to the MySQL database. All right, so now, now that we have this 
table or this users table now what we need to do and this is exactly what the documentation is telling us what we need to do is we're gonna go to the uh, to the web.php um, file which is where all the routes in calligraphy are uh, are defined and you will notice on top of that file there is something called authentication that would need to be uncommented if we really want to allow authentication in our application okay so we need to make sure that this is uh, this is the statement over here we need to make sure that is uncommented and that is uh, ready uh, ready to be used so that's one okay so by doing so what we did is we activated the authentication in our my calligraphy application Great. The second piece that we need to do, we need to make sure that there are routes, the appropriate routes for logging in, logging out, for creating a user, which uh, would be the equivalent of registering a user. Um, and those routes are actually already provided to us by calligraphy, and it's just a matter of making sure that they are activated. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and activate those routes. And notice we have a route called login, another one called logout, we have one called register, and then we have one called not authorized, which we will see what uh, all of those uh, all of those things are. And those are get routes. Then there's one called home, which you know typically is a redirect route that would take us to uh, uh, that that would uh, that that would be you know the the home after you log in. So basically, after you log in, it would redirect you to uh, to this home uh, to this home uh, route or page route. Now we also have two posts route uh, routes in there. One of them is the logging in, and the other one is the registering, which are all calling the auth controller. So typically, if you uh, if you uh, understand well the notion of uh, controllers in calligraphy, if you go to the controllers folder, there uh, should be in there a core uh, folder, and under the core folder. There is an auth folder that contains the auth controller, which typically would contain all the actions that are defined in these routes. Now, I'm only showing you this in case you want to make changes or if you want to create your own to have an idea how all these things are created. But if you don't want to worry about any of that, you do not have to do anything other than uncomment these uh, routes in uh, on this page. Great. So now that we have that, and we have the table that's already created, ideally we are done. And all we have to do is to visit one of these, uh, you know, one of these routes. So let's go in and give it, give it a shot in here. I'm going to go to, uh, to the, to, to the my calligraphy uh, route. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try home. What does home do? Okay. Here we go. So home is actually taking us to uh, to the login page, which if you notice the URL, it redirected us to, uh, to a login page. And in this login page, there is a section for logging in, and then there's a section for registering, which basically is the creation of, um, of a user. Now, let's go check our database. Our database, if I go and try and browse, um, you know, the table, it's empty. So basically, we do not have any, any access at this stage. So let's go ahead and click on that sign up, which typically should take us to some form of a form that would allow us to create a user. Let's see if that's the case. And here we go. All right. So now we have this form, very simple form that asks you for a username, which, you know, could be an email or could be anything else. In my case, I'm going to just say test. Okay. And then a password. I'm going to choose one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. All right. I'm going to go ahead and sign up. Okay, looks like we uh, looks like we signed up in here. Of course, the browser is asking you if you want to save those passwords and so on and so forth. I'm going to avoid all that. All right, so now that I ideally I registered a user or I signed the user up, let me go take a look at what happened in my database. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. And as you can see, we do have a username called test. Of course, the password 1234 has been uh, encrypted. So there's no way uh, in the database to save the passwords per se. And by default, the permissions are set to zero. Okay, I will get back to this. Just remember it for the time being. Great. So now that I have a user, what happens when I go ahead and um, when I go ahead and log, log in? I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to hit sign in. Okay, notice that uh, it's re redirected me to the home and notice how the text over here it changed and says you are currently logged in and then there's a possibility to sign out or to log out. 
okay so all this to tell you is that now it's identifying um, the the user because the user is already authenticated so it's capable of identifying them uh, directly on on the page so I'm gonna go ahead and sign out just to give you an example of how this would look like if I were to go back to the my calligraphy without me being signed in it says welcome to calligraphy okay so let me go back now to home or to log in do test and then one two three four and then I'm gonna sign in now we're gonna go back to our home or to the my calligraphy page and it says you are currently logged in okay with the sign out button so this is saying that the session is now authenticated, meaning it knows exactly who the user is. Great. So now you've seen it, or at least you've seen it from a user, uh, user experience perspective. Let's dig into the code and let go back to some, um, you know, of the controllers that we created in the, in, the pre in the previous videos. And if we look at these controllers, one of them happens to be project controller, which we created when we were creating our REST API. And inside that controller, we have two actions. We have, you know, the, the, the default index action, then we have an add. Uh, action. Let me, uh, just for the sake of the argument, um, see what sort of methods we could apply in this controller that would uh, help us, uh, you know, check um, check certain things about whether or not a user is authenticated. And the documentation describes these methods pretty well. So there is a method called authorize, which actually returns a boolean on whether or not um, a user is, is authorized. And then there's another one called user, which actually gives you information about the user. Okay, and then there are some other commands or actions that allows you to authorize other users, meaning changing um, changing the current uh, connected user or the current logged in user. Uh, it could say unauthorized user, which means you know it would um, it would log them out uh, automatically. And then there's another uh, function which is logging out by uh, providing a certain uh, a certain uh, redirect. And then there's another one called guard, which we will see in a while. Let's first start by looking at the authorized boolean, uh, which is the one I'm gonna do. Uh, uh, I'm gonna do with you to, in this video because it gives you a, a lot of ideas on how it can be used. So uh, let me first probably show you what happens since uh, if you haven't seen the video before. Um, uh, of um, of uh, of the REST API way where we created this project controller. Let me show you what it does. But before I do that, I'm going to sign out. Okay, so I'm going to sign out, and then one of the routes um, is actually a projects. And what this does, it gets us all the projects that are in our database. So if I go back to the database, I show you the projects table over here. You see, those are uh, the projects that have been outputted in a JSON format on the page. When I when I go to this endpoint, meaning to my calligraphy slash project, okay, and I'm gonna use this function now to demonstrate how uh, we can only display this only when we're authorized or whenever we're we're logged in. So how can we do that? This function that we currently have called uh, uh, called authorized. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna say uh, uh, if this uh, if sorry authorized. No this. If authorized like that and it's a function then I'm gonna say dump dump is a way just to display anything on um, on, on the page I'm gonna say you are authorized okay else dump you are not authorized okay we could just do it out of uh, practice so what I'm gonna do is this one we don't need um, do anything right now for it so I'm going to comment it out I'm going to use that index method over here to check whether or not I'm authorized so right now obviously I'm not authorized and I realized I have a typo so let's fix it because I don't like to see it like that <laughs> so let's do it like that okay fixed it so now you are not authorized indeed we're not authorized so now let's go and do a login we're going to use our test user test one two three four and sign in now I'm going to go back here to uh, to my uh, projects and says you are authorized great so the authorization is working and I am able to check for it so what I'm going to do here I'm only going to allow people to see the projects if they happen to be authorized if they are not authorized I am not going to let them see the projects okay so here's what I'm going to do I'm only 
allowing them to see the project. So I'm getting all that information from uh, my database. If it's authorized, if it's not authorized, I am still echoing you are not authorized. So let's go ahead and refresh the page. Of course, now I am authorized, so I'm able to see all the projects. Let's log out and try again. It's logged out. Let's go to projects with a T. You are not authorized indeed. Okay, so this is a very simple way of saying check if the user is authorized and if the user is authorized then in that case show them the project. So now let me show you how I could uh, for example dump uh, the user information. Okay, just to give you an idea on what uh, what this one what this one gives us. So I'm going to go back, log in because we're not uh, logged in yet, or logged in again, and say test, and say password one two three four, and sign in. Now I'm going to go to projects, and these are my projects. And over here, it gi it's giving me. Uh, the user object, meaning the username, uh, the passcode encrypted, permissions, when that user was created, when it was last modified, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is how we can get all the information needed from the user itself by simply calling the user function. This is awesome. All right, so we learned how two functions are operating. Now, what I want to pay your uh, uh, drive your attention to is this permission and I'm going to go to the user table, is this permissions over here. What this permissions does is if it happens that you have or you want to give different levels of permissions within your application. So in some cases, you might want, want some users to be able to use certain features but not others. You could set those permission levels over here based on a, at least the way uh, calligraphy comes out of the box. It allows you to do this based on numbers, so based on certain integers. Okay, so now what we need to do is for each one of these actions or methods, if you would like to restrict access to them by a certain level, you would use the guard function. So now I'm going to go and get rid of uh, what we've created over here. Okay. And instead, what I am going to do, I am going to use the guard function to do exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to say guard. And the guard, we need to tell the guard what the name of uh, the property is to check for the permissions. And in this particular case, it's happen it happens to be called permissions. And I'm going to say guard1, which means for anything less... For anything greater than one, one included, it would allow it to enter here. If it's less than one, it will not go in. All right. So that means even if the user is logged in, they will not be able to access this function unless they have a permission of one. Let's check this out. So right now, first, let's validate that um, that we're logged in, and I think we st we still are because we're able to see that. So we are logged in. And that user has permission zero, so ideally they should not be able to see this anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh. What does it tell us? It takes us to restricted page, which, by the way, is the not authorized route that we saw earlier in the web.php file. Okay, so what did I do here? I said that if you happen to be logged in, but I still want to restrict access for you, because you do not have the rights to access this function, I use the permissions or I use the leveling. So what happens if I put zero here? Now if I put zero, ideally, that user should have access. So let's go back here. Let's go back to projects. What do I see? Now the user can see the projects again. Why? Because the guard is zero, meaning they don't need any particular permissions in order to see this. This is as it's exactly the same as doing the if authorized or else, okay? If you, you keep everybody at one permission level, saying everybody has permission zero, then instead of writing if authorized else and doing that statement every time, you could just use the guard permission zero, okay? If you want to create different levelings, then in that case, you would use that number and it would be more efficient to do it. Uh, why? Because now you're putting... A more of a uh, more of a hierarchy to how you want the uh, the, the the users to be using your uh, your application. 
So let me now show you. Let's put a guard to meaning everybody who has less than two will not be able to see it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and change this permission and put it to one. And ideally, same thing. The one should not be able to see it. So we should be redirected to, uh, in this case, yeah, we're not logged in. So let me do this. One, two, three, four again. I'm going to sign in. Okay. Now let's go to projects again. Okay, and it takes us to not authorized, and indeed they are not authorized because they do not have the right permissions, right? Because we are at one. So now let's go back and now set it to two. Okay, now, by the way, every time you change something in the user table, it, it will uh, automatically not let, you, uh, not let you go through anymore. So now let's go back, sorry, to projects. Okay, every like I said, every time you change the, the user table, it uh, it logs you out and then it asks you to, to sign in again. Okay, so now ideally we're signed in. We can see the sign out over here. Now we're going to go to projects. Since we set the permissions to two, which is exactly what the guard is asking for, then we are able to see the project. Okay. So this is how very, very quickly we could uh, we, we, we have been able to create a, a somehow a strong authentication mechanism um, that could allow us to even control the permission levels within our, uh, within our functions. Now what I would like to also show you, especially if you've done the previous video where, uh, where we saw how REST APIs work. Um, in this particular case, so the REST APIs are activated and people could, uh, from Postman, um, you know, do this exact same thing that we're doing from, from the browser, okay? So we have an API key and we've done all this in the previous video. So ideally, um, when I do read all projects, Okay, uh, ideally it should work, but in this particular case, we're not connected. So what happens? Meaning we're not connected, meaning we're not signed in, and we put a guard of uh, we put a guard of two, but the user is not signed in. So what happens here? Look, look, we're not able. We don't get anything. Why? Because the data is not provided to the user. In order for us to be able to do that, we need to create a new route okay, from a postman that uh, would uh, allow the user to, uh, to, lo to, to log in. And if you're able to log in um, through, uh, through, that, um, through that request from postman, then uh, you will have it in the session and you will be able to, uh, to, 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 access, uh, to access the project. So let's go ahead and try uh, to do that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and create over here, it's a post request. How do I know that it's a post request? We're going to go to the authorization model that's here, the authorization controller, okay, over here. We're going to look at the login function because this is exactly where we should uh, we should go. And we're going to see what the, our login takes, and this is by the way just for uh, you know for you uh, for you to see how it's done. But our login over here it takes a username and it takes a passcode, okay? So username and passcode. This is all we need to give it. And it's a post according to the route. The route says over here that our login is a post. So we're going to do that uh, using um, we're going to do that using login like that. I can copy this. We're going to do it in Postman. We know it's a post. We need to give it a better token, which happens to be this one. Where did I get the better token from the .m file? Over here, okay. Now we created a separate API to uh, uh, API token earlier um, from the previous video, video, and it generated another API key for us, which is the one that we have been using, and that's the one that is right now in Postman uh, populated. Okay, it starts it starts with a D. If you look at the read, look at the ad, they're all using this uh, this token over here. And now what we're going to do, since it's a post, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a form data. I'm going to say username, and I'm going to say this is uh, test2, uh, and then the passcode, remember it's called passcode, test, sorry, 
right? Uh, and then the passcode is one, two, three, four. And ideally, this is my login. So this is going to allow me to, uh, to log in the session. So let's go ahead and do it. Headers, you need to say accept. If you don't say accept application slash JSON, this might lead uh, to mistakes. Okay, authorized true. So now in my session, my user is authorized. So now if I do read all projects and I refresh the page, I send it again. Now I am able to see my projects. Okay, how did I do this? By, uh, you know, doing the login through Postman. And from the moment you do it, it is saved in the session, just like the browser. And then you'll be able to perform the actions on, um, on, um, you know that, that that you're that you're allowed that you're allowed to do. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save this one in case we want to use it uh, in the future. So this is gonna be login, and I'm gonna save it in my test collection. All right. So what we've done today, we've shown you how uh, out of the box you can create uh, an authentication mechanism using calligraphy uh, that comes out of the box with the UI that you need in order to log in, to log out, and to do all uh, you know all the necessary actions that you uh, would typically do in order to validate the credentials of a user. We've also seen the several methods that could be used with. Um, in order, in order to manipulate, uh, you know, whether it's the user information or in order to check if a user is authorized or not, or uh, in order to restrict permissions to, uh, to certain features, uh, we've explored uh, all those uh, um, that uh, from, uh, all those from, uh, uh, from from the documentation itself. But we've seen it as well. We've seen it in the code, and we were able to also uh, see it in action through Postman, which means through the REST APIs. So now your REST APIs are not only just protected using uh, the API key, but on top of it, they are also protected by user uh, credentials. With that, uh, I hope this was useful. Um, uh, we will see uh, more of those uh, features in our next uh, tutorials. Thank you.